Welcome to the Theory of DFS podcast. I'm Jordan Cooper, the co-author of the Theory of Daily Fantasy Sports. It's a 15-hour audio DFS masterclass you can pick up at theoryofdfs.com. Join with me as, mostly, from the High Stakes podcast at Stochastic, and now, now doing NBA content, right? Now that NFL season is coming to an end, it's Neil Orfield. NBA content, T- to me, truthfully... It's the worst. Yeah, I'm. I've been uh, excited and dreading at the same time doing NBA content. I I just did a couple shows this morning. Uh, it's the only stuff I'm doing until Friday, I believe. Is just no advantage shows, just kind of one off, you know, individual short shows, uh, not the live before lot kind of stuff. So much easier to do. Um, not really my something that I have a lot of experience with, but then Friday I'm going to be doing live before lock, so that'll be my first real NBA test. Trying to build lineups while doing a show leading up to lock is going to be it's going to be different. But at least during that time period, it makes sense. Like if I was like NBA, I when I would do like the morning grind with Stevie, and we'd record the night before. It's like why even bother with this? Yeah. Exactly. That's I think Stochastic finally we had the the night before Linquist and uh, and Rinpak did like a, I forget what it's called, but they did a show the night before, which I never even watched. I, you know, I I like uh, consuming content, but it was like I don't see any point in watching an NBA show that happens the night before the day because it's all so news based. Like you, you can't really know who's going to be a good play until you have all or most of the news out. So, yeah, it didn't not really worthwhile. I think that was called the slate starter. That sounds right. Right. See, I know, I know my shit. Come on. Yeah. Right. Oh, but even in, the, even in the morning, like when I would do the, the pregame show on Roto Grinders at, at 11 in the morning and people wanted to talk about today's NBA slate, sometimes I would. And I'm like, okay, well, they'll, this Tyus Jones, John Morant's out. So Tyus Jones, obvious chalk. And then six hours later, Tyus Jones is 7% owned because there's like 14 other value plays. Right. And like 5,400 Ty, Tyus Jones is like, oh, you could play him if you want. I mean, like, right. Like, like that. So it's like, what are we doing here? Right. So like everything oh. is, everything relies on everything else. Like it's one piece of news doesn't change just one thing. It changes everything because if this player is out, this player becomes a great value and it changes the entire dynamics of like, do you need to play value or playing stars and scrubs or a balance and it, you know, every, every or just the ownership in general. Like if you're building yeah. lineups for certain ownership points or whatever, it's like, what, what am I doing? I mean, to me, to me, you don't even consider starting to build NBA lineups until the 5.30 Eastern injury report. Yep, agreed. Like, until I don't, then, I don't like, what are you, what are you doing? Just, just go for a walk. I mean, what, well, what are you doing throughout the day? Go take a nap. I mean, what, what, what do you, I, 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 I never get it. So, cause like, I mean, ML, MLB is fairly static, but at least like starting lineups come out at like 3.30, 4 o'clock for some of the, the early games, but like for NBA, it's like, dude, a lot of, hey, half the time you start building lineups, it's like 615, 620. And then like 20 minutes later, it's like, well, Bradley Beal's not in. Well, that yeah, changes least- that. Like everything, like, like all the ownership is off. Everything is like, everything is off. I got to make adjustments. I got to start re-aggregating. I get like, what, what are we talking about? At least when you're on like live before luck, that's happening during the show where you go like, this guy's out. So now who benefits, right? We're waiting yeah. for the projections to update, but we could still talk about now what do we do? But yeah. like a couple of hours before that, a podcast the night before, I, I just yeah. like other than just figuring out like, oh, just getting a sense of like who is is on the slate, who could potentially be out. I mean, I'm saying I'm not saying that there's no value, but as far as if you're sitting there, to, if you go into work, if you have an office job or something, you go into work. You do some work, and then it's like 10, 30, 11 o'clock in the morning. Maybe it's getting close to lunchtime. You're like, let me start taking a look at NBA lineups. It's like, what are you building then? Like, what are you, like, You maybe you can. Okay, I'm going to build this line. Imagine, Neil, an NBA DFS. You're like at noon. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build my 20 max, right, at lunch, at work, right? And go, this is what I'm going to play if nothing changes. But fuck you. Everything shit like this. Is there right. ever a slight when that Good happens? <laughs> maybe like a three game slate occasionally, but yeah, not, not a full NBA slate. Well, some, sometimes happening. it ends up with sometimes it, it's weird. Sometimes we have, we'll have an 11 game slate where you're thinking that in the morning going, what's the point until an hour and a half before. And then like nothing changes. And it's like everyone that was expected to be out is out. Everyone that was doubtful is, is out. I mean, like we don't get yeah. the thunder or, or anything or the Raptors who are like questionable to starting, you know, that type of crap. 
And then sometimes we have like a three game slate and it's like, oh, okay, great. Like, it doesn't look like anything's changing. And then next thing you know, one entire team starting lineup is out an hour before. Yeah. Like, Luke, we're resting four guys. Like, it's a yeah. three-game slate. I didn't think I had to do this. And it's the late game. Great. So we don't even know the starting lineup. Great. The Warriors are resting everyone. And we don't know who's starting for three hours yeah. after lock. It's a fun sport. It's <laughs> That's why I'm not I, doing it, Neil. I, I fucking, I'm not doing that. I'm listening to Ricky D. Ricky D was the smartest fucking person. I, I, yeah. the, when he was the, making fun of people a couple of months ago, like, you know, yeah, you don't I have to play team. NBA DFS. I'm like, ah, what? Ah, oh, come on. There's an edge. Come on. I, I, I've made plenty of money in NBA. It's one of my, it's my most raw profitable sport. Screw you. I'm going to play NBA DFS. And after two weeks, I'm like, fuck you. Okay. You're right. You're right, <laughs> Ricky. You are right. I'm going to play. I'm going to play. I actually love, and I mean, NBA DFS is the first sport that I played. I've been playing for 10 years now, 2013. I started playing NBA DFS before football or anything. Now I think people consider me more of a football DFS guy, but NBA was, was my first DFS love. I haven't really gotten into it that much this year yet. So I'm, I'm going to be playing this week just to like, know, make sure I know which teams every player is on when I start doing content. It's going to be helpful to, uh, uh, but I, yeah, I'm definitely out of the loop currently in, in NBA and, I've been playing here and there, dabbling, but ultimately I, I do think that it is the sport that you should have the biggest edge just because of like late swap being so beneficial and a lot of people not playing late swap. Uh, maybe maybe there are more people who are doing late swap now than there were at one point, but it's still a good chunk of the field doesn't late swap at all. Uh, so I still think- What happens if you don't want to do it, Neil? I don't want to do it. I don't want to work take from the 7 night to 10 I'm just, I don't want to. Yeah, go ahead and don't play. I, I think that it's a totally reasonable position. Ricky D's position of you don't have to play NBA DFS, absolutely correct. Uh, I I like NBA DFS uh, sometimes. I, I did, I mean, the, the reason I haven't gotten into it is because I felt like I don't have the energy for it so far this year with NFL going on and all this other stuff. I just, uh, and, and frankly, having a bad year last year, I just kind of felt like, <laughs> okay, I need to slow down my DFS, kind of take a little bit of a mental health break a little bit, just slow down. Uh, but now I'm, you know, I'm probably going to, I'm going to be playing. I'm still probably, I'm not going to be maxing out anytime soon, I don't think, but I'm going to be, you know, at least back to the volume that I was at a few years ago. Um, Cause I, I do really enjoy NBA DFS. It really, uh, you, you forget how much you love the sweat when you don't have a sweat for a while. I finally, I don't know, a week or two ago had a lineup that was looking competitive. Uh, and it's kind of like it uh, re you, you remember how, how fun it is to actually have a sweat in NBA DFS. It is, I think one of the, the more fun sweats out there. Yeah, it's stress. It's not a sweat it to me. It's just, it, even if you, even if like, I'm like, okay, I'll make my lineups. And then I sit on the couch, have dinner with my wife. It's I'm always in the mode of, there's a notification that's going to go off that I'm going to have to run to the computer too. Like, yep, that, absolutely. At, all, but at, at least time. you have, you have start times like every half hour typically. So like, and sometimes there'll be an hour between start times. Ugh, you don't really have to do anything. Every half an hour, I got to run shit again. 10 weeks till baseball, Neil, 10 weeks to MLB. See, I'm burnt out. Baseball is what killed me last year. So I like, you know, we, we talked about how much I lost last year. It was such a terrible year for me. The only real season of like the main sports that I had a shitty year was baseball. I just like did not win at all the entire season. And it's a long season with so many slates. And that uh, that wore me down a bit. So I'm like at this point, I'm not even excited about baseball. I'm ready to just jump back into basketball. No, I'm developing. I'm in the middle of developing. I mean, just a start of a little bit more of an automated process. Cause like I said, in the previous episodes that, you know, I'm going to more of an exploitative three man, five man. I, I will still play like a single entry, like a 121 single entry lineup, but like, basically I'm looking to make three lineups, basically like an optimal cash lineup. And that's for like, when I find like randos and you know, the largest double ups or something. And then like a triple X five Mac five X type of lineup. And then like a single entry GPP lineup and mm -hmm. I'll play, I'll, I'll throw the 121, the $12 single entry, the $5 single, like all, like all the way up to 121. And that's my one lineup. And then just have an automate, not fully automated, but like grab the stats from this place, grab the stats, the projections here, ag, you know, aggregate, grab the simulation outputs here. I can make some manual adjustments and then pretty much like show, show me, show me top, the, the top optimal lineup. Show me the. Show me all the candidate lineups for for my thread for the, the the exploitative stuff in cash, and then mm. show me th some candidate like twenty candidate lineups for for single entry based on 
whatever I input. I'm doing it in Excel, so it's not it's not it's it's not great that I'm pulling you know downloading a CSV and then having an import automatically. I'm trying to set up some things like that. I just started. Uh, I figured ten weeks from now I could get it done, and then doing once I have that, then my process is five minutes or something like that. And then also I could just like, I could have, I could, I could leave. I could, I don't have to be on my desktop. I could take my laptop and be like, if I ever, you know, that's 10 minutes before lock. Okay. Let me just load up, load up Excel and, and press a button and it goes, duh, 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 and then take a look at all the things and go, okay, I'm going to play that one. And I'm going to play that one. And I'm going to play that one. And I could just go right on my app even. And I mean, I could just cut it into a CSV, but I mean, I could just go on my, go, okay, what lineup is here? What lineup is there? What lineup is that? And, and, and I'm done. And then if, if it, you know, some lineup isn't out yet and whatever, it's like, okay, this guy isn't playing for that. I got to switch one guy out. Or, I could do that. On so, a laptop. so what are you going to do in the meantime? So 10 weeks until baseball, you say, uh, you're not doing any NBA DFS. What happens between NFL and MLB? Poker. Okay. <laughs> Seems to be going well for you. Right. Well, I mean, I'm still playing soccer. So I'm still okay. playing EPL. Champions League will be back in, in February. So that'll be Tuesday and Wednesday afternoons. So I could do that. I still got MMA, even though they're ruining those fucking contests. Uh, I got Are you going to do until... Rainmakers? Rainmakers MMA? Yeah, yeah. I didn't. Fu- I boycotted last week. I just fucking boycotted that goddamn thing. I don't care. Yep. I don't care that it was added. Someone told me. It's like, you're not taking up the minimum. Play. It's it's the min cash line, and then they're giving out Rainmaker packs for the rest. of. I, I don't even want it in my account. I don't want to touch it. I don't want to know how to redeem it, right? Just get to, if there's DK dollars for it, just give me that instead. They told me I can't do that, right? I even asked. I even fucking asked support. I said, if I get one of these Rainmaker packs, can I just get DK dollars for it and just throw it back in? He said, no. And we'll show you the process in order to get, I don't want to show you no process. Get the fuck out of here, right? And then then you go on the FanDuel, right? And if you go on FanDuel on the desktop, you're going to be pressing and holding for a long time. Just pressing and holding, pressing and holding, pressing and holding. I haven't had that issue. Everybody talks about that. I've had it like oh. once or twice. And it's just, for me, it's just like once. It, I've never had the like extended 20 minute press and hold. Oh, it's ridiculous. The app works fine. I could, on my phone, it worked perfectly. I don't have to do anything. My The, the phone app is fine. But I mean, imagine doing, you can't do CSV stuff. I, I don't, I, I don't, what is going on with fucking FanDuel? I mean, you have all these people like, imagine entering tons of volume. And you have to edit in ZS- CSV, and then you go, and you can't even fucking log into your account. And then you try to lo- you press and hold, you press and hold, you match the fucking street lights or whatever the fuck it is. How many rabbits are in this photo? You know I that type those. of shit. And then it tells you, and then it tells you that you gotta log in again. Like once you complete it, you gotta log in again. And then you try to log in again. And it said, it's, and then maybe you're, maybe oh, you gotta contact support because your account is locked. Like what the fuck is going on? And then I thought you were going to talk about the the, can, the all the contests being canceled last weekend. Oh no no no! I was going to get to that. I was going to get to okay, that. I okay. wanted a little rant about pressing and holding. Right. Then you press Keep and ranting. hold. Keep going. You press and hold. You press and hold, and then it goes back to the fucking login screen. What was the fucking point of that? This yep. is what happens on desktop, though. On the app, it's I can do everything I want. If I'm playing one lineup, fine. Fandle's fine for me. I mean, that's perfectly fine. But you see so many people complaining about that shit, and then you get that, like you said, with the fan, like what that two times. It wasn't like the big NFL Saturday slate, like like yep. an the, hour like the before lock. NFL they Saturday just said, yeah. just they they put they put up a thing that just said do not enter. Yeah, and I so I, I saw some speculation that it was just it was going to have overlay, so they canceled. I didn't get the impression that was the case because it looked like like I would looking at when I opened my app on the first screen, I saw like it's at one hundred eighty thousand out of. 220,000 or whatever. But then you go into the contest and it would say 120,000 have, have filled. So I think it was a pretty big display issue. And I I, have, I don't know what was going on. I don't think it was There were some contests that had know. negative 34 people in it. I didn't see that. Right. So I posted a screenshot that looked like negative 34 out of 800 and whatever the hell it was. And then they just can't. And then, they, of course, they tweeted out. Like, we got to cancel all this for technical difficulties. And then, like, two days later, that happened again. For, like some yeah. NBA I, slate. And then people, and obviously the replies back are like, well, are you going to, we refunded everything. Don't worry. It's like, well, how about my time? Right. I just spent hours and hours making these lineups, preparing for this contest. And you just canceled the whole thing. And they canceled yeah. the whole slate. It wasn't just like the one main content. They literally canceled the entire slate. I think on Sunday they did, they canceled some slates, some contests, but not the entire slate. But on Saturday it was like, it was literally everything, both NFL and MMA is my understanding. Right, MMA sucks there anyway. So I don't think yeah, anyone was that that 
that cared that much about it. I mean, the MMA people, I guess. But the NFL, yeah. I mean, that NFL Saturday slate, that was like a, that was a main big, that was a, that was a big slate. The first. Yeah. And for some people, that was the only action they had on the entire, like, they're looking forward to this NFL day and they've got all this action on FanDuel and now they have nothing. And people wonder this happens. I mean, for the past year plus, all half the titles of the contest are like the merge tags. Yeah, I know. Yeah, they, they just don't care about their DFS product is, is my takeaway. They really want us to quit playing DFS. They're giving us all these hints. Just stop playing here, guys. We don't want your money in the DFS product. We're making money hand over fist in the sports book. We don't give a shit about DFS. Please stop playing. Because they also, like, a couple of years ago, they bought Draft, right? They bought Draft, which is a great app, right? I, I played it's, some it's of the stuff right? on Draft. Yeah, it's yeah. Best but, yeah, yeah. But also daily, like daily drafts. So you okay. can do that as well. Uh, like they, bought, they bought that and then they just didn't do They just basically did nothing with it. And then those guys left Vanduul and started underdog. And like, it's <laughs> yeah. like, well, here's draft again. Yep. <laughs> what, and, what is going on? Like, and it's, and everybody loves it. And they're making, they're making a ton of money doing best ball and doing, they're now doing the, the daily contest and stuff too. And making, it, it would appear to me a ton of money on underdog. So yeah, big, they're big waiting for Fanduel to buy them again. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> but they don't need them to now. They're just making so much money on their own. They don't care about FanDuel. Uh, and then we also had uh, the news today that uh, DraftKings is pulling out of Germany, Austria, Ireland, and Malta. I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't They're going to still be in the UK, but, I mean, they entered those markets, like, maybe, like, four years ago. And a lot of... They tried to capture some of the soccer stuff, and that didn't really work out because they're inept in, in doing any type of marketing in Europe. Uh, so there are a lot of, lot, lot of soccer... DFS people that from like the, that listen to like the Rotowire podcast that, that they're fucked, right? Yeah. They're in German. They're like, they're, they're, they're Germans and they're, you know, okay, well, or they're, or they're transplants and they're living in Germany and now they can't play like, and they gave it with like, like, I think what, two days notice, four days notice. I mean, they oh, sent, really? basically sent out an email saying, uh, we're suspending operations in, in your country. Uh, you got like two days to withdraw. And after it, like, like you can't you can't be in any contests anymore. That's done. And so after the twenty first in J- January, I think that like that you're you're fucked. Like, I mean, it kind of came off as like if you don't withdraw your money by the twenty first, like you may be fucked. Like so, if like, you don't withdraw do, your money, wow. That's... Right? They were t- oh, they didn't say that, but they basically were saying in big kind of big, and, and the wording was, please, we we strongly advise you go and withdraw your money because we're not going to be able to. Like we can't, uh, we can't process transactions, something like that. I'm like, this is insane. Four days notice. Yeah. That's right. Wild. And then, and via an email that maybe be in spam folders or whatever like that. Imagine like, uh, you know, oh, oh, uh, your champions league is off until February and you're playing soccer and you come back on, you know, second week in February and then you go open the app and you can't even log in. Yeah. Right. It's <laughs> like, like that's... we can't access it from here. And I'm like, what the yeah. fuck is going on? Man, that is rough. I'm, I'm I'm curious if there are any top DFS players from any of those countries. I'm sure there are. I wonder if I know any of the names. Weren't they in the World Cup? Wasn't didn't they do a World Cup two years ago? Yeah, I believe it, so. It probably was a German, some German. Oh, the player. yeah, yeah, the oh man, I forgot where I was thinking soccer stuff. Yeah, no, the the DraftKings right. World Cup. I forgot about that. They tried. They tried that idea that that failed. They thought, oh, people would get behind there. Like no, no one going. I don't well, they care didn't choose about... any like pros or people that anybody knows. I mean, th- there were some. I think uh, maybe I don't know. I can't remember who was. No, there, there were plenty there of pros. There were plenty of like, the, yeah. And then there also were specialists. Like I knew like Pew and PSU were in it, and uh, Fear My Turtle. I think so. I mean, they tried to get a, but I mean, they tried to get a, a, a wide array of different types of players. But then they mm-hmm. ran like different countries where it's like here's twenty people from a country that I don't recognize any of the usernames from. Right. I think feel like statewide, like state versus state in the U.S. might be a better, or region versus region. I don't know. Right. We well, they had multiple U.S. teams, didn't they? Have like an Eastern United States oh, and a Western United States or something. Yeah. They thought that people would get bought. Like, I'm going to root for like the Eastern United States. Like, why? No. Yeah. Nobody cares. No, I don't care. What, what? What does it matter? The Canadians root yeah. for the Canadians. So I'm. You're already getting your fucking money tax free. I ain't fucking rooting for you. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, that was a failed concept. I mean, worth a shot, I guess. Maybe I'm maybe I'm overestimating how much of their market share is in the U.S. When I'm suggesting this, just state versus region versus region idea. No, I think most I'm, of I'm it picturing. is. I think mo- yeah. mostly in the United States. 
Yeah, it's my impression also, but I don't know. But the big question, Neil, because it's going to be brought up because it gets brought up like at least every six months since I started playing seven and a half years ago. DraftKings getting out of getting kind of get, kind of getting out of Europe. Uh, FanDuel seemingly purposely breaking their product. Uh, is DFS dead, Neil? Is it dead? Is it dead? I don't it's completely think so. dead. Don't even bother. It's dead. No, I don't think it's dead. I think, uh, and this is d- despite having a terrible year last year, uh, I still think it's alive and well and profitable. Uh, theoretically, I think it's there. You know, the, the field isn't so strong that you can't win at the game. I think that it's still a beatable game. Anytime you've got a peer to peer game, I think it's going to be beatable as long as the contests are big enough and the rake isn't high enough. And the rake hasn't changed at all. The contests are still pretty big. So I don't think it's dead yet. I mean, I'm waiting. Even even if DFS died to some extent, I know I know that the innovation in sports betting with a lot of these American companies, maybe maybe not like the the legacy stuff like Caesars and Bally's and kind of the old guard casinos that they'll come out, they'll be like, just like no house advantage, like that type of game where you select your card of eight bets, you compete against pay $10 and win a hundred thousand. And there's yep. some type of scoring system on your bets where whatever, or something like the the national sports betting championship. Here's your thousand dollar bankroll. You get to bet for the next three hours from eight to 11 and whoever could run up their, their total the most in this fake fictional thousand dollars, but you only pay $5 for the contest. Then you could have all the fun in the world with this thousand fake dollars. And then, you know, top prize is 50 K or something, you know, like some, something like it it has to like, it's good. It's inevitable. Maybe not even the next five years, but it is inevitable that the number one concept that made DFS work, in my opinion, number one concept. And I think it applies to sports betting as well. Why we see so much on the same game parlays, parlays in general, is that people want to take a little money and turn it into a lot of money. People in the yeah. early daily fantasy sports contest, before I even started playing, a lot of it was just like double ups, head to heads, triple ups, like that type of thing. It's like that was never going to make it big. What made it big was when DraftKings poured a ton of money into overlay and said, we're doing $100,000 to first contest. And then eventually the Millie maker and they used it as a marketing cost. And people were like, you mean I could only 20 bucks to win a million? I can build a lineup. It's fantasy. It's fantasy football. I play in my office. Well, like that, that concept of turning a little into a lot is what drives the most amount of casual participation. It's a dream. Yeah. And I can't see that it just being left to like these like really high VIG SGP type of things that people will be like, okay, the sites or some, some, you know, innovator that some, that Fandle buys and then doesn't do anything with like something like no house advantage, like comes up with that concept and then they scale it and they go, okay, like, oh, you don't like these SG, you don't like making 14 leg SGPs, that we that are that are have like a thirty five percent hold on it, right? How about how about we just take fifteen percent rake, and we don't you're not playing against the house, you're playing against other people, you're playing against your fellow betters, yeah. And here's well, this a, format, no, and you only have to pay twenty bucks. That. Yeah, that's exactly what Noah's advantage has right now, right? But they they're and they're they're trying to do the okay, we're gonna do automatic, like not automatic overlay, but like we're making the contest bigger than we think can fill so that there will be overlay. Um, and they're, they're attempting to, you know, take that that business model of, all right, we'll, we'll give you a GPP where you do these, you choose 10 bets, choose the over or under, and you know, whoever gets the most points at the end, you rank your bets, you know, and mm-hmm. you get 10 points for, uh, for your top bet, nine points for the second, et cetera, et cetera. Whoever has the most points at the end wins. Of course, I, I played a contest last night and I won it. It was uh, five thousand dollars to first, and I won eighty bucks because so many of us got, you know, all of the the ten correct. Um, so I think that's well. That's uh, what happens know, when so ca- stochastic with. does all the work for you. That's true. That's exactly what I did. Is I copied and pasted our CSV of <laughs> chose eight random lineups. I think I chose eight. So I, I, actually, I said that I turned it into eighty bucks. I turned 
I think $80 into $82 <laughs> with one of them being a winner of my eight. Uh, I, I just copy and pasted randomly eight of those because uh, I because I'm doing this now advantage content. I was like, OK, I want to be able to like track and be able to answer questions that people have them about the product. So I entered those and uh, yeah, I had. One but, of them. but at that point, there there is a game theory element then with the ownership of the bets. That's true. And I not something I factored. I did not realize that, that I was going to run into so many duplicates because I think of a, a 10 leg parlay as being fairly unlikely to hit. Um, but, you know, I guess. Yeah, but I mean, Stochastic re- promotes no house advantage so much that half the people playing on it probably is from Stochastic. That is true. And also, so I, I know now now that I'm doing uh, no house advantage content. So they have versus the house and they have pick them contest. So it's the pick them ones that are that style of contest where you're playing against other people. And the pick them props are much, much softer. So like, it's like we, we have the over on, I want to say 4.5 assists for somebody, right? And we have somebody, I, I'm forgetting who it is, but somebody I think had like 4.5 assists. Uh, we have the over on and we have projected for like seven assists on the day. So on the pick them contest, they have at 4.5 against the house. They have the prop at 6.5 assists. So it's like much tighter in the, the against the house. I think they intentionally make them softer in the, uh, in the pick them contest because they don't really care. It's not, there's no rake there. I mean, there, there there's no, uh, negative to them to having softer props, but right. which makes it easier for there. people to have picks that they like, but then, then you need no house advantage ownership yep, of the exactly. bets. And then you which leverage. I don't think anybody has at this point. Right. Cause then you calculate the EV cause with, with props, you could actually count with statistical projections. You could calculate the exact EV of a bet. Right. You go, how much is one rebound worth? How much is one assist? How much is everything worth? And like, if this was the line at no, at no VIG plus 100, right. What, what, how, what's the expected value of over four and a half when our statistical projections are 7.18. And then you have a, a figure like that. And then you compare it, go, how many people are going to choose this in the 10 point spot or in the nine point spot or the eight point spot. And then you have some calculation that says based on the ownership, based on the EV, maybe there's a maybe the the fourth best bet is better in the ten in the top bet spot just due to ownership. Like, yeah, you understand now why I'm waiting for that type of thing oh, at yeah. scale there because is. it ends up becoming DFS again. It ends up becoming GPP DFS again. It's the same. It's literally the same fucking concept. Yeah. Now you're just weighing like like okay, here are all the available bets instead of just salary based players. Yep. Do you uh so so I, I think that it would be and I have no idea if this is a common issue. This is just last night there was tons of dupes at the top. I don't know if that's a common thing, but if that is a common thing, I think it'd be a better product if they just use the versus the house lines instead, right? Just make well, it. Well they have to have less, static less ones. Tough. They can't have ones that move because that would be unfair. Yeah. So basically they have to set ones like when the contest comes out and then never just like the salaries in DFS. But right. the th- but the thing is uh on no house advantage uh can are you allowed to make correlated cards? So yes and no I think there were so again I I've just started playing with it. The not by the days. way this is I not sponsored by no house advantage. I, I, this I, is I, not yeah. There's yeah. no I, there's no promo code there's no nothing. I've never even played. I don't even think I can in Kentucky anyway so yeah. like I don't think it matters. That's said, use promo code Stochastic. Ah, okay. Use <laughs> I've, that. Why I've not? been doing these promos all day. Yeah, uh, you get a hundred match deposit bonus. Uh, no, uh, it. I I believe there are some bets that you cannot correlate based on just my my little playing around with it. I believe as I was doing the not I don't think in the pick 'em, but in the and I'm not hundred percent on that. I believe in the versus the house. I ran. Yeah, but I can understand that, Neil. I understand versus these. the house. I'm talking about specifically in the pick 'em stuff. Oh, in the pick 'em stuff. I don't think that I think that you can make any bets. I don't think that there are correlation. I could be wrong about that. But so like in ba- like what starts. which ones would they have for baseball? Like for like would you stack in base like like Right. Like stack hitters or pit like obviously like if I don't know if it's just player props or their team props or something where you could essentially say like I want to have this pitcher under and strikeouts and then take three hitters against him like that type right. of Right. Yeah. You play, you play the opposite of what you would in DFS of like, oh, this pitcher is going to get blown up. So I'm going to go under f- 15 uh, and a half pitching outs for yeah. gas. There can. have to be constraints. I have to, I have to imagine they have correlation constraints, but I'm not, but not I'm for not the sure pick to pick them. I mean, they, there's, nothing, I guess they have no reason to care. Yeah. Right. They have no right. reason to care. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, someone sure. reach out. Jordan at theory at DFS.com. Let me know. Let me just, uh, or reach out on Twitter at Blender HD. But I mean, but those, that, now you understand what I'm like, okay, I'm not playing NBA DFS for 10 weeks. So like, let, let's, let's get these, like, let's say four years from now, it's like we get, every six months we'll have this conversation is DFS dead. And we'll realize that we've been saying this every six months for 10 years. Right. And the contests still go. I mean, yeah, there's ebbs and flows and certain niches go in and out. But like it's not it's not dying. It's not is it growing? Is it is the growth spurt? We're so used to 2014, 2015 DFS that we it's it's very similar to poker. I've I've read some some poker forums uh for the past like one or two years. And people are like, is is, po- is poker dead the same thing, is poker dead? Right? People working with like, these solvers and their and all these training sites and YouTube vloggers and everything like that. And it's like People are getting really good at the game. I said, dude, dude, I, I've played 13 sessions already for plenty of hours. I said I'm 12 and one, and I'm almost, I'm up almost 15 grand. Poker's not dead. Yeah. It's not. It's not. I don't well, know. Maybe I, it's just. Maybe it's just not dead in Kentucky. Maybe it's dead in other right. parts or in, in where you are in Kentucky. Maybe there right. are some places you can't. There's no edge. Right, but but people were saying that like in 2008. Yeah. People were saying that in 2013. People like, cause we're all comparing it a lot. If, if you're, if you're in the late thirties, early forties, you're comparing it to 2003 poker where everything exploded. And it's like the growth went through the moon yep. and it's like, well now, well now it's not that it's like, it's never going to be like that. Like that. It's never going to be that. Yeah. So don't compare it. And then the even slightly younger are like comparing it to like 2008, 2012, like when black Friday happened, and they go, oh, Black Black Friday kind of killed the business. It's like, it's it's still there. Po- poker was around in the 60s and 70s and 80s. I mean, like, there was still plenty of poker going on, right? And there was still plenty of books coming out with to help you with strategy, whatever. And 99% of people didn't fucking read them, right? Yeah. They still, uh, I play poker with the guys for 20 years. I don't have to read a goddamn book, right? right? And now it's on TV, and now they start explaining some more basic concepts on TV, and then people misapply that shit, right? So it's like, like it's not dying. So I, I view DFS in the same light of like, like I'm on the DFS pregame show, essentially teaching you like exactly what I do to build. Li- I mean, like here is literally exactly what I do, and then you could just recreate this and do it and just have bankroll managed properly and just live for the long term, and you're probably going to be profitable. Mm-hmm. And like, oh well, DFS DFS is dead now. Like, dude, you know how many people play this fucking game, right? Like, it's not it's it's not dead. Yeah, it's not 2014 any. It's not. I'm gonna play a, a five hundred dollar head to head against some guy that's playing someone that didn't start, right? right. Played a guy that's yep. on IR. I mean, like, or in basketball, people have projections. They have right. Didn't have projections. Didn't realize in basketball when so and so is out, all the usage goes to this guy. And yep. then never plays that guy. And like, like, it's not that I, I get it. It's, it, it is not that anymore, but if that's what you're comparing it to, you, it's such high standard with these companies are spent. We're spending half a billion dollars on advertising. Right. right. And now they're spending a half a billion dollars on advertising, but it's mostly for sports betting. DFS is still there. I still go in, I go in in the contest, you know, like, like two years ago, like I look at the MMA for this weekend and it's a and it's a a, a pay per view card. It's a twenty. The main GPP is twenty three thousand five hundred entries. Twenty five dollar contest entry. A hundred thousand a first. Like there were t- like people tell me before I started playing MMA like four three four years ago, a pay per view card would be like wow we're getting fifty k to first, right? Normally it's like twenty k to first. Yeah. Type of thing and like. Like, dude, this now is people are ruin their MMA product, and most of us dropped out. Right now, now people, our oh, MMA is ruined on DraftKings because we're not getting two hundred thousand every week, and yeah. and five hundred for an like, or maybe two hundred for a pay per view card and a hundred every week. Now we're getting fifty and a hundred. It's dead. Everything, Chicken Little, got to jump off a fucking cliff, right? Like, dude, compared to four years ago, MMA has grown so much. PGA, yeah. you go back to PGA. In 2015, compared to now, it's you would think it's ridiculous what the prize pools are in golf. But yeah. if you're comparing it to 2017, 2018, where it took a very big spike, you'd be like, oh, it kind of plateaued. 
Is DFS dying? It's like, just because it's not growing doesn't mean it's dying. It's dead. Right. No one can make money. No one can do anything. The rake is too high. They have to reduce it. Like, dude, there's still plenty and plenty of fucking idiots playing. Yeah. Still plenty. The majority. Look, Neil, you lost money last year. Even You're I still lost playing. Money last year. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Play a much lower volume. Uh, but you know those conversations are going to happen. I mean, on Twitter, I mean, you, you see. You, they're always you, happening. You, right, yeah. they're always happening. Is DFS dead? Is any, and then anytime, anytime any a well-known pro, like, starts dabbling in something else, everyone takes it as a sign that you got to you gotta get out. Right? Yeah. Like, like it's NFTs or something like that. Like, oh, Ricky D's not playing at NBA. Is DFS dead? There's or like no A. Jones. A. Jones stopped playing. This is like a year or two. It was whatever ago. Yep. DFS is dead. He stopped playing. Right. I mean, like, like kind of like, oh, oh, I don't see, I don't see Papa Gates. I don't see the Burrito Brothers in as many contests. And then NFL season comes around and they're fucking blasting away. So it's like yep. DFS isn't dead. No. <laughs> right? They see me playing poker. I got I've gotten DMs saying, have you stopped playing DFS? Do you think it's a bad, bad thing to play now? Oh, now I understand why you're teaching everyone because it doesn't, it, it, it doesn't matter anymore because there's no edge anymore. It's like, <laughs> no, there's, there's still plenty. There's all just from an hourly perspective, there may be better uses of your time. Yeah. Right. If you want to grind out NBA, I, I think it's insanely profitable. Right. But do I want to take on that variance when I could do another activity with lower variance? The fact that I'm calling poker lower variance shows how much variance there is in DFS. Yeah. So it's like, and why not develop an automated, more automated process? I'm spending my time. I'm spend. It's not like, oh, you're not playing NBA contests, so you're not playing DFS. It's like, no, the next 10 weeks, I'm going to be working probably 10 to 15 hours a week on shit in Excel for MLB so that yeah. I'm, I'm ready for the next six months from April through through October in MLB. That's what I'm working on, right? So like- Wait, I got a, I got a better question thing. though. What the hell are we going to talk about between NFL and MLB if you're not playing NBA DFS? Whatever. Look, look at what we're talking about now. We could talk about, dude, I could yeah, talk about anything true. for an hour. Yeah, that's true. I know you can. Right. <laughs> but does it matter, right? <laughs> Good point. Right? Maybe I'll get Eric back on the show. We'll talk about best ball, right? You said Is that last week and you haven't had him back on yet. Right. I, I, I forgot to count up. I was going to see if I've passed him yet in a number of guest spots on this show. All I all I know is that like when I, when I if if I if I I I'm pretty sure if they released drafts for next NFL season, Eric would be he'd be on Spike Week live streaming the fucking he'd be the first day Absolutely. came out he's drafting yeah. already. <laughs> yeah, he's not wasting any time. <laughs> not wasting any time. So because I had him on high stakes, I asked him when is the best time to draft, and he said that he likes the barbell approach, which means really early and really late. So as soon as the draft comes out, when people don't really know. You know where players are going to play and who's going to be in a good spot. It might be one of the times to take advantage, get some players at low rounds that you won't be able to get later on. But we mention all these things like best ball, DFS, no house advantage, prop betting, sports betting. There are edges everywhere, and I think I think that people get wrapped up a little too much on if there's edges everywhere, I got to do them all. Right and. You trust me, you can't. I mean, like you're only one person, unless you want to develop some type of team, somehow and scale it or something like that. You can, I guess, but I mean, dude, don't you don't have to you jump around. It. But the thing is, is that you don't have to jump around if you don't want to. Like, yeah, like, if you don't want to, there's absolutely no reason to. There's NBA props. I could, I could, I could go in prize picks and underdog. And grab some NBA props. You got to work on those also because of all the fucking news. So like that, even that is work. But when MLB comes around, my pro my my MLB process will essentially be wait up until like one in the morning, which I'm up anyway. Wait for the board to come out. Hammer anything that I see based on the statistical pro projections and then go to sleep. Check it in the morning to see if there's anything new up. And then... Then I'm 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 done, and then come a half an hour before lock, make my make my three MLB lineups, and that's it. And then if I want, eat, I could do that. I could like this. This is what I I see my schedule being, in like April, right? That I that I I wake up in the morning, typically around nine nine thirty, right? Take a shower, do the do my eleven o'clock show, 
pregame show. We talk about DFS strategy. I teach some stuff, right? In the morning before the show, I check the the, the, the props and everything. Anything new? Did the pitching outs go up, right? Because they don't release everything in the mor- overnight. Because uh, Underdog, a lot of times, releases in the morning and prize pick releases like way, like 1 a.m. So I'll check the Underdog stuff, see if there are any discrepancies, start making my little two picks and everything there, do the show, right? After the show, I grab, you know, grab, grab a, eat a sandwich or whatever. And then I go, go off, drive a half an hour, get myself on the, the waiting list for the fucking poker game, sit down, play some poker. And then once, uh, you know, six o'clock comes around, put my play over box over, whip out my laptop, go sit at an empty table, right? See what's going on with the, with the MLB lineups, build my lineups, Right. Close my laptop, put it, take over, and keep on playing. And I'll get a notification if I need to change anything. If I, oh no, this guy now is out. Like every once in a while, that happens. You just said you don't need to like maximize every edge, and it sounds like you're just like doing everything at once. You're playing poker, you're playing DFS, you're doing prop betting. Yeah, but there's but it's segmented times. It's not like it's gonna. I. It's not like NBA where it's like three thirty, someone's out. Let's check the props. You know, like that yeah. type of shit, right? And then I play some, and then I get home. I leave at like midnight, right? Drive half an hour, get home, fire up the desktop, wait for the prize picks board to come up at 1 a.m. for MLB, hammer hammer those, and then go to sleep. Yeah. Sounds like a nice, profitable day. Right. But the thing is, is that if you wanted to do other things, there's 8 million other things. You could go, okay, what's going on in college basketball? What's going on in this? Like, there's so much shit. But I think I, I work better when I focus on certain things rather than try to do 14 things at once. So like I need to see where where are the edges that I that I feel comfortable with my time management, with my risk management to do. Mm-hmm. And NBA, I just cut out. I just said, like, instead of doing that, let me just perfect an MLB process. I still got Saturdays for soccer and MMA, so that's that's it's fine. And then, you know, NFL could come back next year and I got Sundays for that. And that's, that's perfectly fine. I mean, like, and then I still got the process for NFL props, which you only have to do pretty much once a week. So it's like, you got that. And then once I get that, once I get that procedure down of like, okay, I'm in a, I know the schedule and the groove and I'm, and I'm, and it's not stressful because I got everything structured. Then once I got that working like a, like a, like well-oiled machine, then I could maybe go, let's add something else to this. What can mm-hmm. I, what, what else can I add or what else, or what other edges are out there? There's, there's 800 of them. So it's like, okay, let me pick this one. Then let me do that. Maybe, may, maybe, maybe I'm doing the like, soccer props or something like that, but it's like, I'm, I'm not trying to do everything. And I, I see it in, in the road grinders discord, a lot of people trying to do everything right. Oh, oh, they, you say to do this and you say, and this guy is doing this and this guy uh, there, here's will doing the, this for this on monkey knife fight. And this, the, like, like don't the fear of missing out on like a, a 2% edge is like, fuck you. There's tons of the 2% edges, 5% yeah. edges. Find the ones that you do best focus on them, you know, keep on hitting that well. And then once you're comfortable, then start adding, adding another site, adding another, just like in DFS of like, I'm trying to play 150 lineups on, on FanDuel and Yahoo and, DraftKings and then doing cash lineups and then I'm gonna do this exploitative line like like yep. dude you're not you're never gonna do it that well unless unless you have a process to automate a lot of that stuff. Right. Which is what a lot of top players already do. That's yep. why they're in everything. Uh don't try to don't don't even try. You're gonna fuck so you're gonna you're more likely to fuck something up. Or if you're not fucking something up, just playing sub optimally, you yes. end up with 150 set where you burned 50 lineups that were negative EV because you were right. just rushed or you didn't notice that that when you aggregated projections that one column was off and this guy a- averaged a zero when it was the guy above him and next thing you know, why is his projection so low in your aggregate and you're not getting any of them because you, you fucked up some fucking thing in Excel. Like, if you're just focused on one thing at a time, like those things don't Whole last one thing. Don't half ass two things, whole ass one thing. Whole ass one yeah. thing. Is that the title? Whole ass one thing? Yeah, that's from I think it's a quote from a movie, right? 
Don't half-ass multiple things, whole-ass one thing. I don't, I don't know. know if we can get away with ass in iTunes. I don't want to put stars. Okay. Right. I think well, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna that. stick I'm gonna stick with pressing and holding. Pressing and holding. I like right. It. If you if you want to listen to this podcast, you got to press and hold for a long time. Blender, you know what? Uh, one other type of edge you can find, and I wrote about this last week, and I actually pitched the idea. It wasn't a story that anybody brought up. I've been playing flash drafts on DraftKings for maybe five years now. Like I can't believe. I still think of it as being a new product. And then I was like thinking about when I first started playing, and it was like, yeah, back when I lived in my old apartment, and we'd go to the bar for trivia night. And I was like, that was at least four years ago that I started yeah, playing. Flash draft. I think 2019 they introduced it. Okay, 2019. Because right, I tested as part of the, the old VOP committee, we tested it out before it was released, uh, and they still do that. I know you. I saw you tweeting about the flash drafts. They're it's insanely in- exploitable. It's ex- yeah, exactly. Because people people just like uh, as I said uh, in my article, it's like you can choose the same player multiple times, and people will not do that. Like they'll it'd be like, there is a one to one correlation here. Though <laughs> you can't find a stronger correlation in any type of contest as picking the same player twice so like if the player comes up once pick that player again or if the player comes up once and you did not pick them the first time don't go and pick them the second time because there's obviously correlation that way too it's right they have combinations cool. they have like like a, this guy plus that guy or whatever like yeah. that typically if you want to go by, by an optimal strategy that doesn't base around like ownership because obviously many people could do it is that because you don't get to know in these flash drafts typically it's what three or four it's five rounds five, five okay five three rounds. picks each Three picks each round, five rounds. Yep. Five rounds. So you don't know what picks two, three, four, and five when you pick one. So like right. when you go to one, you pick whichever one you think, you know, is, is best. And then at that point, now the game tree veers on like, well, the next pick should be correlated to the first. Like if you pick this uh, uh quarterback points, yep. it's like if the next one has wide receivers, it's a wide receivers, whatever wide receiver correlates with that quarterback. And then the next one is like, like you could kind of build game stacks and like, you yeah, know, exactly. type of, I mean, obviously it's one game because the flash draft is for a single game, but for one quarter, it's for a quarter of the for game. a quarter of one game, but you're saying, yep. but you're building, well, if this guy's pass, if this has a passing touchdown, then the wide receiver here. And then if they get the ball, if, if the other team gets the ball back, they're going to be behind, which means they're going to pass more. So you don't take the running back. You take the wide receiver and they make these little combinations or this guy or this guy times two, right? Like yep. double the points and you go and all you have to do is just weave through there and just correlate your lineups as best as possible. And hopefully yeah. when that outcome happens, like, like voila. And then yeah. you see, and then you see the ownership. And when the shows afterwards, like I'd say a good 30, 40% of the contests, the people that enter, and do them don't have any type of correlation. They're just the, I think it's the most casual of casual players do these. Like, it's like, well, I got, I got no sweat on this game. I'm just going to, I'm going to enter one of these flash drafts and it's like just a quarter or something to cheer for. So I think it's, it's not really like a lot of DFS. I mean, it must be some. Well, also, just, also it, it, the top players won't do it because it's not something you could like upload a CSV. Like you have yeah, to do exactly. it in real time then. And also the prize pools aren't like, Right, Matt. Like you're I'm not like, gonna you're not gonna win fifty thousand dollars doing a flash yeah. draft. I mean, these are types of things where you pay the twenty five dollar level, like you get paid out like eight hundred bucks or something. Right. I mean, it, it is scalable based on how many people enter. So I I think I've had prize up up to like two thousand or so, maybe is my the, the top I've had when I got like you know enter every single contest. So you, you can also do like there's a one dollar entry, five dollar entry, ten, twelve. I don't know. 20, right, but you can't have uh, multiple entries into the like it's like. One one dollar right. entry, one two dollar entry, one three. Like you could have all of them, and they all have to be the same pick. So you're in all the contests yep. with w- essentially yep. one exactly. lineup, yep. like that. And it's just yep. a matter of what stakes level that you're being entered into, and you could enter them all. But I'm saying yep. even if you won all of them, I mean you're not winning. Yeah, you're not winning fifty or hundred thousand. Money or anything. Like I said, I think I've won like two thousand dollars doing that. But that's like having probably. 400 in play or something so you're right you know, yeah you're not really putting any great multiplier on your money but but it is as you said i think it's extremely exploitable relative to other types of contests just one more type of place where you can find some edge if you're looking for it same thing i mean the same thing could be said with the tears contests uh, yeah i've never played those but i imagine it's pretty similar right in, there, there are the, a lot of there are a lot of people in gpps that they like the highest projected lineup is like this but like if you're playing Patrick Mahomes, like instead of playing, yeah, I know Justin Jefferson projects more for Trad than Travis Kelsey, 
But like you're playing Patrick Mahomes, so play Travis right. Kelsey. And then who are they playing? Oh, they're playing the Chargers. So play in the other group where you could select between like DK Metcalf or Keenan Allen. You're going to play Keenan Allen. Like you're building, you're right. building a, a team in a game stat. I mean, like, like it, it seems obvious to me, but you go into those tiers contests and yes, they're not huge contests for yeah. the GPPs, but you go and you download that CSV and you see like a good 40 plus 50 plus percent of lineups that they'll have Patrick Mahomes and Justin Jefferson and right. DK Metcalf and all three players aren't even correlated to each other at all. Yeah. And it, and you go like, why, like, like, why wouldn't you? Yeah. There's, there's no like salary restraint. There's no, like you have to pick someone in a tier or something and, like, cause typically you get to pick two quarterbacks and four wide receivers and two running backs in a group or whatever. Hmm. And it's like, it's so easy to make just double game stacks, like just double game stack, double game stack, double game, do double game stacks. And the next, and if you want another entry, you do the other. You just, oh, now I'm playing Herbert, right? On this side, now I'm playing, you know. I'm and playing... in these contests, you can see what's coming. Like you can see what all right. the options right. are. Right, it's right. Like you're building it all at once. It's just like yeah, DFS, yeah. just no, no salaries. It's just every yeah. tier, you know, eight tiers and each tier. The top tier has like four, but the bottom tier has like 10, right? It's simply like the pyramidal type of, type of thing and then correlate and do it. But how much money can you win? I mean, you're not going to win $50,000, but... Here's another edge, right? right? Now, people will ask, well, then why aren't you? Hey, if it's such an edge, Jordan, why aren't you doing it? I'm like, because I'm only one fucking person, yeah. right? There's only right. there's only so much one person. What am I going to focus on, right? I did, And I, I played tiers, right? I've done that because I thought, like, let me take a look. Is there an edge here? And I go, oh, there is an edge here. But for the amount of time that I put in, like the expected return with the volume that I would put in is like, a hundred dollars, maybe expected return. Right. Yeah. So like if I spend like a half an hour on this, right. Which after, you know, 1130, you know, NFL inactives or something like that, like, okay, that my expected return is uh 50 to a hundred bucks, but that's also a half an hour that I'm taking away from GPP lineups that have a much higher expectation because the prize pools are bigger. Right. So like, what am I spending my time on? Unless I have some automated process, I can't, I, I, I fucking can't do that. So like, yeah. so I'm like, okay, now that I found that out, I could always go back to it if I wanted to, but it's not enough of an edge that I'm going to take away from building my NFL main slate lineups. Same that thing with the thing turbo. Flash drafts is that right. it's during the game. So like, you don't have to do it during DFS time. You've got all your DFS lineups in. Now you're just making a second quarter flash draft. It's a little bit easier. Right. But you still got to be around at a time. You got to like, you got to, yeah, yeah, it is still time involved. Right, it's not something you could pre-plan or anything like that. Like, oh, okay, let me play these flat flash drafts, and then yeah, and then it becomes like NBA DFS, where I'm gonna play this flash draft, and that flash draft, and this yeah. flash for this game, and then that game. Same thing for like in, in, with the baseball. Well, we'll have like the main slate, and then the turbo eight o'clock slate, and then the turbo nine o'clock, eight thirty nine o'clock slate, then the late nine thirty slate. Like you could, what most like professional prof top end professionals. They're building lineups for all the slates. Like once True. the seven o'clock slate locks, they're building lineups for eight o'clock. Once the eight o'clock slate locks, they're building lineups for. They're not watching right. the fucking games. They're not right. running flash drafts, right? They could, but there's there's more time. The better time to be spent for that. So like, like that whole ass one thing. You know, it doesn't even have to be one thing. Whole ass a couple of things. Right. Right. But don't just jump. I I see people jumping. They go. I've been doing this. For you know, they say I've been doing this for three months and I'm profitable. But you say there's an edge there. I'm gonna go start doing that. And like, well, how about the thing that you're doing? It's like maybe I could do that also. It's like, are you sure? Right. Right. Why are you jumping? You, you're the green is the grass is greener or somewhere else. I mean, like, if you're doing well here, get really good at that and then dabble a little over here. Right. Do you have to do it immediately? Oh my God, if I don't go now, two months later, the edge is gone. Like it's it's not that. Mm -hmm. So people jump around and then they go, okay, instead of doing what I've just been doing for the past three months, I'm going to do this for the next week or two. You're not going to get a refined process in a week or two. So after two weeks, you're like, I don't know if that's, I'm going to go back to this now. Yeah. And then then I mentioned something that there may be a little edge over here. It's like, I got to go over there. got to run to the, it's like, dude, there's edges everywhere. Right. Right. Feel free to look for so long, Neil, 
I, I bemoan sites like Prize Picks for the awful fucking holds. Because like 99% of the lines are fucking you can't win because you got to make these two game, par- these two thing parlays that need to pay at least minus 137. And a lot of times lines aren't going to like anything you pick, especially if you pick the wrong side is like the hold is absurd, right? To have to do that. So I'm like, I'm not even going to bother signing up. This is just a fucking scam. Not a scam that they're going to steal your money, but just like only the dumbest people would fucking play on this shit. Until, until until someone else, some sharp player, told me, said, you, re- you should really reconsider your prize picks take. And when someone said something like that, I'm like, okay, let, let me take, let me, let me really take a look. And it was during MLB season. And it's like, no, you just, it, 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 he basically told me, he said, you got to get them early. He said, don't, don't look at prize picks an hour before the slate. He said, get them early. All, didn't say anything else. And I know prop betting, getting the lines early, obviously. I mean, that's normal. And then I started looking at these lines and comparing to like the bat projections. Mm-hmm. And I was finding three or four easily. I mean, like three or four that are over minus 137 easily, like every board. And then NFL came around and like the lines came out and compared to the blitz. Like that first week, I think I found like 28 lines that were off enough to satisfy a 57.6% like win rate on them. And I'm like, Fucking, I'm gonna put some money into this shit, right? <laughs> then in and over over MLB the, the the last two months of MLB and uh, the first ten weeks of NFL, like I made twenty five grand. And what? And I'm not building lineups. I'm just jamming in round robins of all these things. And a lot of times you, you're spending an hour or two, and then you're done. And like, there's nothing like what? I'm not swapping anything out. There's nothing. You know, if someone gets injured, it's just a DNP, and the, it gets voided. So like, and you're doing this before bed the day before. Well, for MLB it would be yeah. For MLB I would like I would wait until the board went up at one in the morning, and then slam anything that was really off. And sometimes they'd have really off. They'd have they'd have a guy in the in the bat that's projected for like seven seven almost seven and a half strikeouts, and the line would be like five and a half. And I slam the over in as many mm-hmm. combinations as possible. But if you wake up in the morning the line would be seven. Right. Right. So if you wake up in the morning, the line's seven, but like there's a ton of people that moved it to seven because it was so off. So you, you may show up in the morning going, yeah, there's no lines here. What are you talking about? And definitely once an hour before a lot, you know, six o'clock at night when people are asking me, you know, well, what prize picks you got today? Well, like, nothing that you could get. I mean, like, yeah, I right. got, I got this guy's, I got, I got Kevin Gausman overs, Right. You know, and they go, it's like, oh, so you like over seven. It's like, no, I like over five and a half, right? right. <laughs> like, I like five or five and a half over. It's like. So is it the, it's the same, same kind of concept as Noah's advantage, right? Where you're picking a bunch of different props and it's making a lineup with the props? No. Or is it well, just straight par- I mean, it's a par. basically you're making parlays. Okay. So, so you it, are. So it's not like a GPP. It is just a no. versus the house versus parlay. That, right, exactly. Versus okay. the house. So probably not legal in Minnesota. It sounds like more like. Just parlay like sports betting, right? It's more like, okay. but it, no, it's they're typically fine if your if your state has DFS. It's more likely to be. I mean, Kentucky, we don't have legalized sports betting, but we have DFS is not regulated, so Price Picks is here in Kentucky. I can't I can't bet on sports. I mean, obviously, when I go when I go play poker, I'm in Indiana now, and I I mean, I'm at a Caesar's property. I could literally walk up to their sports book in the casino and bet yeah. if I want to. Not saying that their lines are any good or whatever like that, but I'm like in Indiana, like I I could do I could do normal normal prop betting if I wanted to at any of the DraftKings, FanDuel, any of that type of stuff there. But how much shit I'm one person, Neil? Right? Oh, now that you could do that, now you're going to be on DraftKings Sportsbook and looking picking off bad lines or whatever. It's like I'm only one fucking person. Yes, I yeah. know that there are edges out. I know. I know, but I'm only one person. So I don't need I don't need them all. I don't need all the money, Neil. I don't. I'd love all the money, but I mean I don't need it. Yeah, I take all the money. Not my money though. Not your money. <laughs> Just everybody else's. Right. Definitely. Everyone else's you could have everyone else's money. Well, at the very money. least, I'd, I'd I'd like to stop giving everybody else my money. Okay, yeah. I didn't take any I don't think I've taken any of your money. No, I in 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 you've been in we've been in contests together in large yeah. GP. I did, so at some point, I've cashed, and it's been at the at your benefit because you didn't. 
Yeah. Do we have Do we have a beef? Do we have to set yeah, up a boxing yeah, we match? We got We got beef now. Yeah. Do we, do we have to yeah. set up a boxing match? We talked about this already. I'm not into violence. We're just going to do darts instead. This is our very first episode. We talked about, am I going to get into a boxing match with somebody? And I said, no, let's play darts. And then uh, we talked about Siege a little bit. Okay. Oh, yeah, because I, I, I thought I thought he sent me pro putt-putt player. <laughs> That's he, he He is apparently that, too. Right. He's a so man of play, many We grades. can play some miniature golf. Yeah. And yeah, I'll darts. play mini, mini golf. I used to be very good, or at least I used to be very into it. I don't know if I was ever very good, but I was very into it at one point. Who's into mini golf? It's fun. It's a fun game. Yeah, but I'm but saying, I, are you in, like, what I mean? Like, I'm talking about, like, high school. I would dra- I would go play mini golf a lot. With okay, no, no, I would play mini golf. But no, when you say into it, I'm thinking of, like, my, my like, on the spectrum type of behavior of, oh, into it, meaning that you're studying golf course designs <laughs> yeah. and no, practicing, no. like, how to get it into the windmill. Like, you're just going through, like, five hours of, like, studying windmill b- blueprints in order to time the time the the fucking spinning fan thing and go okay at this and then you're plotting out on google maps it's like well the, this windmill depending on the time of day right it 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 spins at this rate but sometimes it spins if you see it counterclockwise that means you have to take a second off of your beat like that's what i mean by into it no, I, that, that's not what I meant. I meant I used to play casually like once every couple of weeks with my right. brothers. Uh, but this does remind me, I do have a new, uh, I have a mini golf app that I've been playing a lot. My nephew introduced me to Golf Battle, the mini golf app. Uh, so I, I guess I have been getting back into it digitally a little bit. Do you have to buy coins and stuff? Is that one of those games where the in-app purchases get you? Yeah. So Is that, is that uh, where all your DFS money went? <laughs> yeah, all my DFS money went to DFS and NFTs. Uh, right. No, it's uh, you, I don't think you have to. You can buy in-app purchases. I actually have not really uh, bought much in the app. I think I bought at one point because I got confused about like whether I needed to to play upper or to to play. But I only needed them to play upper levels, and I you can also earn them. So so you don't really need to. I don't think. Right, but if you want to play more courses or something like that, it's like yeah, oh, I, I did. This. I did make one in-app purchase once. I also got. I had a, an Apple. I, oh, I got it from I got it from DraftKings. I, I got uh, an Apple gift card, which apparently I cannot use for like anything. So I just use it for in-app purchases. So I use that. Why'd you get a card like, that local. doesn't get used? Get an Amazon. I got. I I did the same yeah, thing. and I got I, an Amazon card. For some reason, I was thinking that it was going to be. Uh, I could use it for uh like when i use apple pay i thought it was going to work for that but it doesn't work for that so it just works for like in-app it's kind of worth it like movies yeah, yeah. and, and it, stuff like you that. know like i buy things with itunes sometimes so it'll I'll, I'll spend it right i just put it on my amazon and my subscribe and say basically DraftKings for the next year is paying for my toilet paper yeah perfect right that's that's pretty much Thanks what DraftKings and my my paper towels and my shampoo and that type of stuff you know what i'm dreading no longer being in the Onyx tier next year. Well, you don't think you're going to make it? Down. No, I'm not going to make it. I mean, I haven't been playing the same volume that I had been playing, and it's much tougher. I guess I guess based on my old volume, I would have made it because I actually, you know, wasn't benefiting from doing all the little tricks and stuff. I just, mm-hmm. been, you know, I made it by volume, but I don't think I'm playing enough volume to make it this year. Oh, so you're not going to get you're not going to get a blanket next year. I won't get a blanket. I won't have a, I don't have a VIP rep anymore. I'm just going to Does it matter? My... Does that fucking matter? I, I've, I've had 17 different VIP reps and none of them remember who I am anytime I text them, which is once in a blue moon, for whatever. Yeah. It's always some new person or it, who gives a fuck? Yeah. No, I, other people seem to take advantage of it. You see other people posting all the time, thanks to DraftKings at a game. And it's like once every month. I've, that, that, no one's ever asked me to a game. Yeah, ever. me neither. Yeah, they hate us apparently right. my wife Somebody loves the, my, my wife loves their swag like she 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 took that she loves the black she took the blank she thinks it's a very a very nice it is blanket. a nice blanket i've got my i've got it in my basement i use it right and then the the, the christmas sweater thing yeah i right? like the sweater i gave it to her i like the, oh, i like great. the the glasses the glassware that they gave us i know yeah well i had that still I, i've never bourbon. used it right i mean yeah. it's up on it's it's next to like three bottles of liquor that's probably five years old that Still yeah. are half See, filled, and I don't, I don't remember the, remember the last time I had a drink or anything. Yeah, you so and they're I are, they're on, sitting there. Not the not the opposite end of the spectrum. I don't want to make it sound that bad for me, but uh, but I do. I, I like I like bourbon. I like so I use those those drink that glassware some. Right, but they send stuff. They sent me a rainmaker's hat, and I just threw it in the garbage. Yep, I've I've got that somewhere around here. I don't think I've ever worn it. Right. Once I I got I was like, am I ever gonna? I mean, wear you're, this? you're wearing a DraftKings hat right now. Yeah, but there's a nice, there's a nice one. There's a nice that fitted a nice one. one. I agree. Nice. Yeah, it's a great. 
right. This is good. this is good. I, I like this, yeah. right? But I, I had to ask for this. See that that's the only time. That's the only time I've ever that I've ever gotten anything from a VIP host. Literally, a- any time because I got not, like I got, D, not DK bucks or anything like that. No, I mean I could use DK. I mean, uh, but I could use the DK bucks for contests. Get the fuck out of here! I ain't paid forty dollars. No, that's what I mean. But you've never gotten VIP. Have you gotten from your VIP rep? Have they given you DK bucks ever? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Right. But I'm like not in a text. I mean, it's not the type of like I got. I got. I, I, I saw that they were like sent an email or whatever out that they're, you know, they need my size or something. This was a long time ago mm-hmm. and they're sending out like, you know, swag or whatever. And then I, I responded back cause it was the VIP, it was from the VIP person, right? Not just from a support email. And I said, I said, uh, if, if you, if you, if you don't mind, uh, if you're going to send that, if, if you're going to, can I get a request for a certain hat, right? The fitted hats, like the, not the dad hats or the snapbacks or anything like that. It's like, mm-hmm. I refer that because I don't want to wear any of the other hats. I don't want the one, because they were going to send out, this was like in the beginning of like the sports book push, and it was looking to say like DK sports book or whatever with a snapback, right. and it was like, you're just, I'm throwing that out. So like, right. like can you just specifically send me like this hat? Yeah. And that, then I got a response back like like a couple hours later, said, yes, yeah, no, no problem, Jordan. We can, we'll, we'll make sure to send out that hat. And what ended up happening is I still got the sports book hat of course. in the package. But then like a day later, this w- one came individual. So obviously like they're not going to separate the boxes. They're just like, okay, just send this guy a fucking hat. Yeah. Right. So here you go. Here's a hat. We're not going to no. There's going to be no Bengals games or Cincinnati Reds games or anything. Nashville predators, wherever Louisville hasn't fucking nothing. You're not going to be yeah. in a luxury box for that shit, but here's a fucking hat. Yeah. So I'm nice glad hat. I got the hat. Nice hat. You didn't get a grill? I got a grill from... Uh, from no, I, I got the... What, what did I get? We got the, the Yeti cooler. Okay. Yeah, that was the other option. Right. And then my wife got a printer. I mean, that, that like last year, they sent out that thing of like, you have 300,000 crowns in the in the Dynasty store, which essentially is like almost like Amazon. There's like 18,000 items or whatever like that. And yeah. once you do the calculation of the crowns, it's like it's like somewhere between three and 400 bucks. Yep. And I looked and was like, is there anything that I need here? And I looked and I like, there's nothing. I, I would buy any of the things that I need. So I just get, I just went to my wife. I said, go on to the Dynasty store. Look for anything that, you know, don't don't look for a $16 item because you could only spend it once. I said, look for something in the three four $400 range, right? So we filtered by like 300,000 crowns or below. And then she does all these crafts and stuff and makes t-shirts and cups and whatever the fuck. She's like, oh, they have a sublimation printer some photo printer or something like that. And it was like 270,000 crowns. So I'm like, oh, f- okay, that's what I'm getting there. Nice. So like, she loves DraftKings, right? Shit comes, yeah. she just, every it's once great. in a while, some free shit comes. Typically, she's using it. I'm if you, not if you give them a million dollars, they'll send you a few hundred bucks in free shit. It's great. Right. Well, I'm not, they don't get a million dollars. They get, no. they get the rake on I know, that, I know. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I just spent the million dollars. Like, not really. Yeah. You spent 150,000 probably somewhere between 100 and 150,000. Yeah. And all I got was this goddamn hat. And I'm ha- and I'm grateful. I'm grateful I got hat. the fitted the fitted the fitted hat. I love all I love all my drafting stuff. I appreciate them. FanDuel doesn't send me stuff. FanDuel doesn't well cuz I I I don't to them I'm <laughs> I'm just some random once in a while. I'm I'm restricted from the 1 and 2 dollar contest now but like I'm 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 an I'm a no one. They don't. I I play on Fanduel and I got uh, I got an invitation. Congratulations! You can now buy from our store. <laughs> I believe was, was the email they sent. A year That's or a two perk ago. just to be able to buy from their store. Yeah. Oh yeah. You could buy from them now. Congrats. Fantasy Draft sent me stuff. I got a T-shirt and shirt from Fantasy Draft, yeah. and then they went out of business. <laughs> so it goes. <laughs> too many hats and shirts going on. That's, That's right. how they went out of business. Too much. Right, because they went to they went to that subscription feed thing, and I said this is going to be a disaster. Yeah. Right. I'll pay it because now the rake is like fucking like four percent now. Yeah. It's okay. I'm I'll, I'll play some NFL. I'll play some NBA. Okay. Let's let's pick a lineup there. But like you looked at the once they did that, and you looked at the contest, all it is is fucking sharp players. Like like right. no like n- you basically just eliminated all the people that we make money from. So like, what the fuck am I doing? Uh, yes, you're right. It's four percent rake, but I'm mean, it's every uh, ten man contest is with like n- like nine people that I recognize. I mean, these are, every contest Yahoo yep. ended up being that way also. Once they stopped doing some of their overlay shit, you go there and you're like, okay, I'm gonna play. I'm gonna b- build my baseball lineups, 
And it's like, oh, great. I recognize literally everyone in this contest. Like, that, that's, that's not a good sign. No. Right? I used to love Yahoo so much. It was just free money. Not free money, but it was much, much softer. And now it's hard to win there. And and it's also hard to change line. I mean, dude. I mean, yeah. Matt, they're at what? What's the point of if it's if doing anything in their their phone app? There isn't. You can't see how you're doing. Yeah. It's no. Just like, they, it's not, you can't even sweat. You can't even sweat it. I don't even know. I would go there with my Yahoo lines. I don't even know how. I could only go by like the currently winning versus like the whatever projected win. Like, okay, I guess I'm doing well, but I don't know which lineup this is. Yeah. Right, compared to that or whatever. through them all until you find one that looks promising. Yeah. Right. And I'm like, well, how do you, or- why would you organize it this way? Yeah. Like, this is just, this is awful. Yep. At least and they're not, fa- at least they're not FanDuel where you go, you go through, you look at like contest standings and either you're really close to first, but really in 1700th place. Right. Or you're really close to catching, but really in last place. Right. Like those markers I feel like they used to be better. I think that's a new thing where the markers are just way. No, off. it's always been. It's no, it's always been like that, hmm. right? Because you see one lineup, you see one lineup towards the top, and I'm like, oh, that's the promising lineup. It's like, no, it's a 1700th place lineup. Why does it look like it's close to first? Because it's not. And then I would have all these bunches of lineups by the cash line. I'm like, okay, maybe I cash some of them. I go, and they're like all in like the bottom 90th percentile. Like, yeah. why don't you show it towards the like, dude? Like like forty percent of the bottom is no there's no lineup because they don't display anything in that zone, yeah right because they don't want to make you look like you're fucking stupid or anything. So then yeah. what's the point of these markers? You might as well just leave them as merge tags. <laughs> yeah, not not a great product. They paid so much for a study in order to visualize and hypnotize you with the with the placement markers, and they can't even they can't even fucking can't even title contests at all, and they have to cancel slates. Due to technical reasons. Yeah, I agree with you. It wasn't because of overlay. The byproduct is, yeah, they don't have to overlay, but I think it's more, it's it's Hanlon's razor, right? If you, you know what Hanlon's razor is? I'm familiar with the term. I can't think off the top of my head what it is. You know Occam's razor, right? You don't know what, the, you don't know your razors? Again, I'm familiar with both of these. I can like, uh, no, I, I can't. Aren't you, I aren't, can't. Did, you, went, you, went to, you went to law school, right? I did. I did. Go you to don't law know school. these terms. These are. These are. These are. I don't like remember most of the things I learned. Rhetoric term. Blender. <laughs> Occam's razor. All my law school friends would know these things. I'm sure. Occam's razor is that the simplest. The simplest answer is usually the correct answer. Okay. Right? Yep. Right. When in I'm doubt. With that. Yeah. Right. Hanlon's razor is uh, don't. Uh, uh, I don't know what the the, the technical phrasing of but like don't uh, chalk up to uh, uh, like it being like nefarious. Chalk it up to incompetence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like anything okay. that looks like like someone's trying to put it past that they're trying to do. Like most likely, it's because of just people being st- stupid. Like, oh, yep. oh, they canceled the contest because of overlay. It's like they canceled the contest because some incompetent person fucked something up. Yeah. Most likely. Yeah. Most of the time, that's the case. Ah, <sighs> get your razor straight. So we have so many show titles for this. Now, I, I don't know what. Get your razor straight, pressing and holding. I still like pressing and I just fuck it. I That's already wrote one. it down. Pressing and holding. Yeah, whole, I can't do the whole ass thing because I don't know if iTunes is going to fucking not display the episode because of it. But Neil, high stakes podcast on the Stochastic Podcast Network that comes out with 700,000 podcasts every day yep. on the podcast feed. If you subscribe to the main feed, you're going to be swiping the archive like every every goddamn day. Because every video that you guys do and every, like everything, which is fine. Great. Great. But it's just like, I wake up in the morning. It's like, oh, you got 28 new episodes of podcasts. I'm like, okay. And then wrestling podcast, news podcast. And then it's like, like. I think High Stakes has its own channel. Yeah, I, I, I subscribe to the own just so I don't miss it. Miss because there's like 8,000 of them in there. And it's like, oh, when's yeah. the next high? Oh, maybe I missed it. So you can subscribe to that. At Player Q DFS on Twitter. Anything else? No, I think we've covered a lot of topics here. Right. See, there's always stuff to talk about. That's true. Right. Plenty. Right. There's always there's some be, there's, there'll be some boxing match set up or something. Right. Yeah, we'll box. We'll mini golf. Something. Right. We oh, had that whole thing in MMA. If you were part of the MMA like fantasy communities, like some guy did like some pick 'em contest and just ran off with like forty grand I heard or about something. That. Yeah. Right. He set the eights it up there. I don't know yeah. if that's before your time. No, it's not before my time. Oh, I remember okay. that well. Right. So. So there's always going to be stuff to talk about. That's and we true. talk about it here. You can follow me on Twitter at BlenderHD. And as always, 
Pick up the theory in daily fantasy sports. 15-hour DFS audio masterclass that you can pick up at theoryofdfs.com.